Okay, hi, and welcome to the Engineers HVAC podcast, where we work to give back to the HVAC community by sharing our application and design experience. I'm Tony Mormino, and I'll be your host for this live episode titled Psychometrics Part 1, How to Read a Psychometric Chart. Thanks for joining us live for this live PDH event, and we'll get started here in just a few minutes. I am broadcasting from our office in Marshall, North Carolina, and it's a beautiful day up here, and I'm glad to be on the show. So these live events are an excellent opportunity to engage with the HVAC community, so we would love to hear where you are from. If you drop your name and uh, location in the chat, we'll give you a, we'd love to give you a shout out and see um, where you're from. Good morning, Heather from, from Morrisville, North Carolina. Heather, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing, I'm doing good. good. Living large, large and Yes. <laughs> Living large and in charge. Okay, I love it. Yep, good deal. Thank you, Heather. Heather is running uh, the behind the scenes back here for us and it's going to keep everything going today. If you would like to follow along, good morning, Jacob from North Carolina. Good morning, Syed. Good morning, Lewis. Let's see here. Coming in fast here. Ryan Christopher, good morning, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Matt, good morning from Atlanta. Ali from Saudi Arabia. Wow. Worldwide today. And also, if you all would like to follow along, you can download a copy of, you know, one of two branded psychometric charts we have. We have one for Insight Partners and one for Hobbs and Associates. The link is right there. Heather just put it on the screen. So you can go there to insightusa.com slash psych charts and download a PDF version because we're kind of going to do this like a classroom style. We've got a whiteboard back here. and We've got some, you know, some little props here we're going to play around with to demonstrate relative humidity and dry bulb. Angel, good morning. Hey, Jamie, how are you? Good morning. Hey, Tony, hey, Tony. question in the chat, chat. Um, um, earlier on about this will be saved, right? right? How can people, people listen to this later if they can't listen to our, our watch live? live. Say that one more time. Uh, we uh, had we a, question a question in the, in the chat. chat. Will, Will this, this show be recorded? recorded? And where oh, can you find it? Yes, good, uh, good question. The show is recorded. So all of our live shows live on our YouTube channel. You can go to YouTube and type in at HVAC TV, uh, HVAC dash TV on our YouTube channel and it'll pull up the YouTube video, uh, the video of this. So. Yep, and Heather, I think we have a QR code for that. If you wanna put that up, folks can click on that, so. Great, so we're gonna get started here in just a little under four minutes. Uh, Jacob's experiencing a bad echo. Is anybody else experiencing an echo on the user side? This does happen when we go live sometimes. So if you are listening and experiencing an echo, if you would let us know, we'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, thanks for thanks for joining us. And we, we appreciate you all being here. We've been doing these live for, um, okay, it looks like we got a bunch of echoes here, Heather. I wondered if it's my mic. Let me change over and see. Nope, nope, it's my only side. with I know only with Heather. Okay, thank you, thank you all for the feedback. Thanks, Tom. Heather, you want to try and um, refresh your screen? You can go ahead and do that. Um, hey, Ryan. Yeah, thanks for thanks for the heads up. You know, we rehearse these things all the time, but it's like it's trust me, it's a miracle we ever even get on here live. So. We appreciate the feedback, and uh, no matter how much we prep, we always have something like this happen. So, um, thank you, Keith, and thank you all again so much for being here. We're going to get started here in just a minute. Um, Heather, I think, is fixing her mic or has fixed it. How do you sound now? Let's let's have a check, a sound check for Miss Heather. I now we can better. say again. I think I it's think better. better. All right, we think Heather has fixed her echo. I'm going to go on mute. Thank you, Heather. 
Hey, Eduardo. And thank you all again for joining us. We're going to get started here in just a minute. Please download your, hey, Eric, good to see you. Uh, good to hear from you. Uh, you can download a psychometric chart from the link that's overlaid on the screen there, insightusa.com slash psychcharts. And that is, that is a link from... I'm, I'm getting feedback. It's still an echo. I'm assuming it's not from me. I think it's just from Heather. But uh, so you could download your psychometric chart from that website and you could follow along because we're going to kind of make this a, a tutorial thing. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing this morning? So we're going to get started here in just a minute. Hey, Ray, good morning. Dan, good morning. Jacob, thank you for the mic check. And we so appreciate y'all being here again. You could download your psychometric chart the, on the screen there. It shows you where to do that if you want to follow along. Um, yeah, we're glad to, glad to have you here, Ray. So we'll get started here in just a minute. And uh, this is one of my favorite prezos because it's so, it's so, um, yeah, Heather, that's fine. Hey, Greg. Yeah, David, it, it would be nice if David's on here. He could probably do a lot better than I can teaching this stuff, but. Hey, Sam. Thanks for joining us. And we're gonna get started here in just a second. We've already had our gremlin issue with the sound, so maybe we won't have any more issues. We will see. Either way, we're gonna give this a try as a couple air conditioning folks just trying to get by and learn a little bit about psychometrics. Okay, so my timer is gone. That means it's time for me to go ahead and get started here. See that Heather's back. Okay, give us just a sec. Heather, can you, I'm assuming you can hear me. If you need me to do anything, uh, let me know. Hey, Francie, good morning. Pablo, good morning to you from Honduras, pretty cool. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and officially start this live uh, podcast here. Okay, so hi and welcome to the Engineers HVAC podcast, where we work to give back to the HVAC community by sharing our HVAC application and design experience. I am Tony Mormino, your host for this live episode titled Psychometrics Part 1, How to Read a Psychometric Chart. The Engineers HVAC podcast is brought to you by Insight Partners and Hobbs & Associates, two commercial HVAC rep firms committed to educating and empowering the HVAC community. This podcast does qualify for PDH credits in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee, Maryland, Alabama, and many other states. So please email me at the end and I'll provide you a certificate. I'll also send you a PDH of our branded psychometrics charts if you want one of those. We're gonna go ahead and put the email up here. Uh, Heather, you can go ahead and do that anytime. If you're watching this or listening to this at a later date, just look at the video description. You'll see my email in there. If you still need the certificate or if you need a PDH chart, just email us and we'll get that to you. So again, if you'd like to follow along today, you can download a PDF of our Insight Partners or Hobbs Psych Chart at insightusa.com slash psych charts. <laughs> And I think that is up in the, on the screen there. And you could go and download your, your chart there. Um, okay, so running the show behind the scenes is our trusted producer, Heather Robinson. So Heather is doing well this morning. She already chimed in. She was having a little mic issue earlier. So we're gonna leave her, um, leave her being, let her run the scenes behind the show here. So, okay. So one of the reasons we do uh, these programs live is to engage with the HVAC community. And so please ask questions in the chat. And I'll do my best to answer them uh, as we either go through the prezo or we'll wait to the end of the presentation. So, okay, so that ends my introduction and we'll go ahead and get started with the actual. Um, okay, Heather is checking in. She said she's doing good. She can hear us. She's just going to stay muted for now because of the sound issue. Okay, so where am I at here? All right, so psychometrics. Okay, so, you know, 
we don't jump up every morning excited about doing psychometrics, right? It's, it's, it, could be, it could be very boring, but in my opinion, in my experience, been in this industry for a little over 22 years now, it's extremely, extremely important to understand psychometrics. And so psychometrics is the fundamental science of HVAC engineering and design. And as HVAC professionals, it's crucial to understand psychometrics for several important reasons, efficient system design, comfort and indoor air quality, HVAC system efficiency, HVAC equipment selection, low calculations, and troubleshooting and maintenance as well. So those are just a few of the reasons why this is important. And to me, I can tell you my, um, you know, my career was built on the strong foundation of psychometrics. So, you know, I, I, I value that extremely in understanding uh, how systems work. So anyway, so psychometrics, again, is the science of air properties and process of heating, cooling, dehumidification, and humidification is also the cornerstone science of engineering, of HAC engineering, and the chart creation is credited to Willis Carrier in 1911. Okay, fun fact. So the word psychrometrics comes from the Greek word sukron, meaning cold, and metron, meaning meaning means of measurement. So there's your trivia for the day. Go and impress your significant other or friends with that. So psychometrics is not confined to the world of air conditioning. It is used in fields of agriculture, aeronautical engineering, um, agriculture, I already said agriculture, food engineering, drying of crops, grains, and pharmaceuticals, dehydration, meteorology, and weather reporting. So, okay. So here's kind of what I'm gonna go over today. We're gonna use the computer, we're gonna use um, the PowerPoint presentation, we're gonna do some of it on the whiteboard, and we'll go back and forth and make it, try to make it a little more uh, classroom style um, deal. So the properties of air is the first thing we're gonna talk about, then we're gonna look at how to build the chart. You know, when you originally look at the chart, it looks extremely overwhelming, right? You've got all these lines on here and numbers, and you know, what does it all mean? So we're just gonna break it down piece by piece and make it real easy to, to understand, hopefully. Um, building the chart then we're going to talk about moving around the chart the psychometric processes of cooling heating humidification dehumidification and and combinations thereof of those processes and then we'll also spend a few minutes and do a tutorial on you know if you know the dry bulb and wet bulb how do you figure out the rest of the properties of air how do you how do you determine the relative humidity the humidity the dew point the enthalpy etc so we've got three examples to do that as well. So again, if you have a psych chart handy, um, that would be helpful. Okay, so properties of air. The five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six properties we're gonna talk about are dry bulb, wet bulb, dew point, relative humidity, humidity, and enthalpy. And these are kind of the standards like, well, you know, I would say enthalpy, we don't really deal with that mostly on a day-to-day -day basis, but the other ones I can say, at least from my standpoint, um, very important to know. So why don't we hit, camera B here. We're gonna to go to our little science lab here. Give us just a second here. All right, camera B, okie dokie. So here's what we're gonna talk about. First, we're gonna talk about dry bulbs. So what is dry bulb? So most of us today use something like this to determine the properties of air, right? Let me change this to Fahrenheit. So the dry bulb in my office is 71.6 degrees. It's just the temperature of the air. It is independent of the humidity or the moisture in the air. And this is your classic, you know, dry bulb thermometer. This is where I'll show you where the term dry bulb comes from. So I bought this. Walked across the river yesterday to Bowman's Hardware Store in Marshall, North Carolina, population 650 people. So we're a, we're a big, ginormous city up here. And I bought this thermometer to demonstrate dry bulbs. So if you look at the back here, you can see there's a thermometer that runs up this whole thing. Like if I was gonna break it out of the casing, it would just be this, I think it's, I think it's plastic. It might be glass, I don't know. But anyway, the bottom of it has a bulb on it, okay? And we get the phrase dry ball because it's dry, okay? There's, no, there's nothing on there. So it's measuring the actual temperature 
in the air. It doesn't care if it's 100% RH in here or 10% RH. It's just measuring what we call the sensible heat of the space. Okay, so that's dry bulb. Very easy to understand. So what is wet bulb? So wet bulb, and you could Google something called a sling psychrometer, and I, I would bet there's people in the chat who are going to say I still have one. Uh, I don't have one. I wish I did. It would be great for this demo. But a wet bulb is when you take a wet piece of fabric, I think it's cotton, some sort of wicking fabric, and you put it on the bulb with thermometer, and you take the thermometer and you swing it around. I'm not going to try to swing it around here, but it's on, some of them are on a swivel, some of them are on a, a, actually have a string connected to them. So what happens when you have a wet wick here is the water wants to evaporate, okay? And when the water evaporates from this, there's this means evaporation, by the way. So when the water evaporates from the wick, it, pro it produces a cooling effect and it lowers the temperature. So the dry bulb, the wet bulb temperature is always lower than the dry bulb temperature. You could imagine the drier the air, the more water is going to diffuse or evaporate off of the bulb and the more cooling you're gonna get. So the lower the wet bulb, you know, the colder the wet bulb, the dry is, is significant of drier air. So if I go back to our device here, it's 73.2 in this office, 55% RH, it's very nice. And the wet bulb is 64, okay? So you can see the wet bulb is, you know, unless you're at 100% saturation, it should be less than the, the dry bulb. Okay, so wet bulb versus dry bulb, I think that covers that. Okay, so dew point, now I have an experiment here. So for dew point, we're gonna go back to our meter. The dew point in this office is 57-ish, 57.5 degrees. Now what dew point means is it's the temperature at which moisture will be pulled out of the air. So anything colder than the dew point of this space will condense water on it. So for example, I have my trusted thermometer and a can of cold sparkling water. And I'm going to measure the temperature of this can, which I'm assuming is pretty cold because I just took it out of the freezer. Okay, so the temperature of this can is, for some reason my hole's not working. Let's see here. So it's in the low 40s, it's 42-ish degrees, okay? So 42 degrees is the temperature of this can. The dew point is 54.8, 55. So as you would expect, you're condensing water on the can. Might be a little hard to see. You can see some of it there. But the water is got some, the can does have some water on it. So that's condensing water. So this can is at room temperature. You can see it's not condensing any water. So dew point, anything colder than the dew point will condense water. That's how cooling coils work. That's why we keep cooling coils colder than the dew point of the air so we could remove heat and humidity from the air. Okay, so that brings us to relative humidity, which I'm gonna use these beakers to hopefully um, demonstrate what relative humidity is. So let's clear these off here. So let's say you had a volume of air at 55 degrees, which is represented by this empty beaker here. And let's say you heated that up 20 degrees, you would expect that it would expand. So that's represented by this 75 degree beaker here. And then we heat it up again, one more time to 95 degrees, and you would expect the volume of the air would increase. So the relative humidity is the amount of moisture in the air versus what it can actually hold at a specific condition. It is relative to the temperature of the air, okay? So I know there's a lot of smart people on here. So what do you think would be, would represent 50% relative humidity in this beaker if I filled it up with water? Okay, so I would say halfway full would be 50% RH. And let me see how well I did. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but I think that's close enough. Okay, so that would represent 50% RH at 55 degrees. This would represent 50% RH at 75 degrees. I think that's close enough. 
I'm trying not to let my engineering brain, you know, force me to add and, and remove water to get a precise amount here. So, okay, so 50% at 95 degrees, something like that. Okay, so each of these conditions represent 50% relative humidity. Well, what do you notice between these two beakers here? Well, this beaker has much more moisture than this one, but they both have a relative humidity value of 50%. And therein lies the issue when you're using relative humidity to determine how much moisture is in the air, because it is relative to the temperature of the air, okay? So that's kind of an example of relative humidity. Now, Brad Schmidt the other day suggested I do the following, which I think is a good idea. So I'm gonna take this and dry it out. I'm gonna take this 75 degree temperature and dry it out. So 50% RH at 95 degrees, how much water would that be at 75 degrees? Well, it would be saturated 100%. It would flow over if I filled it all in. So that gives you kind of an idea of, you know, at 95 degrees, 50%, it's the same amount of water as, you know, 75 degrees, um, you know, 100% plus. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope that explained that right. And I'm going to go ahead and empty the speakers so I don't spill water all over myself or my computer live on LinkedIn and YouTube. Okay, so relative humidity. Now, often confused with humidity. Okay, this is a big, this is a big deal to understand the difference between relative humidity and humidity. So the humidity in the air is the actual amount of moisture in the air. Okay, it is not contingent on the temperature of the air. It doesn't care what the temperature is, okay? It's the physical amount of moisture in the air at a given, at a given state. Now I'm gonna represent that here in a minute by using um, another visual aid here. So, okay. So on our psychometric chart, humidity is expressed as grains per pound of dry air, okay? A grain is a unit of weight initially based on the weight of a seed, but is now defined on one seven thousandth of a pound. It is used to weigh bullets, arrows, sometimes medication, and in our industry, the water in the air. So what does a grain per pound look like? Okay, so let's, what is a pound of air? So at standard-ish standard, standard -ish conditions, a pound of air is about 14 cubic feet of air, which is if you envision a cube at about two and a half feet length width height, approximately that's 14 cubic feet of air. So on a 95, 78 day, which is an extremely hot and humid day, that is equal to 120 grains, okay? So what does 120 grains of water look like? Well, it's equal to about eight grams. So that's why I got this here. So I'm gonna put this on grams. I'm gonna zero this beaker out. Eh, I think you could see that pretty good. There's a zero there, it's a little blurry, but okay. So 120 grains. I feel like a, a science teacher. This is pretty cool, actually. This is a little more fun than doing PowerPoints, but we do have PowerPoints. Okay, so that's eight grams. Magically, it was just exactly eight grams because I only measured it four times. Okay, so this is what 120 grains looks like. 14 cubic feet of air. If you were to take that and wring out the moisture, that's what physically would come out of the air, the actual amount of moisture in there, the physical amount of grains, okay? All right, so I hope that explains that difference there. And now we're gonna move this stuff over because we're gonna move on to the next part of this presentation. And I hope this is helpful and please again, ask questions. We'll check the questions here in a minute. So I'm gonna go, Heather, do you wanna hit us back on the presentation? We'll talk a little bit about enthalpy. Thank you. Let me get to the enthalpy slide here. So the last property of air we're gonna touch on, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this because we do we do a little more of this in part two, which is enthalpy. So enthalpy is the total heat energy in one pound of air in BTUs per pound. It's expressed, so think of just the BTUs, okay? It's, and it's the total amount of sensible and latent energy. And again, we're not gonna talk about that a whole lot in this, in this presentation. So um, let me just change something here, okay. All right, so we talked about the properties of air. Now we're, gonna, now we're gonna look at building a psychometric chart. 
And this is going to get fun because I get to use the whiteboard, which I haven't used live online yet. So we never know what's going to happen. But OK, so this is a psychometric chart. If you've never seen one before or even if you're not familiar with it, it looks extremely overwhelming, right? Like when you first see this, like, what the heck? Where do I start? I don't even know what's going on here. But really, when you break it down, you can watch this video. You know, if you're watching live, great. You can always rewatch it again on our YouTube channel. We've got we've done this presentation many times. And if you're like me, it probably takes a few times to watch it and go through an actual chart. But once you get it, it's really, really simple to navigate around the chart. And I would encourage you, especially if you're new, to do that. Because again, for me, having a fundamental understanding of psychometrics helps in all aspects of, of this business, that's for sure. Because really, it all is built on that. Um, OK, so we're going to build a chart here. So you see this outline I just put on here? We're going to represent that on the whiteboard here in a second, and I'm going to start filling in the different values. So let's say we extracted this outline from the chart, and we're going to go, Heather, can you try and shoot us over to the whiteboard here? OK, so I'm going to move this out of the way. So you can see on this whiteboard behind me, this kind of represents the outline of a psychometric chart. OK, we can start by looking at the, the Y and the X axis. OK. That's what's represented here. And then we have what's called the 100% saturation line, 100% RH line, et cetera. And I'm just going to fill in. I'm going to go down the psychometric properties we just looked at, and I'll just fill them in on the chart. And then we'll do this on the computer as well. So I hope this makes sense. OK? So let's say you're you know, Willis Carrier, and you want to build this chart, and you go out there with your your thermometer and your your whatever tools you have available at the day, right? Your your dry bulb and your wet bulb thermometer. Let's start with dry bulbs. Let's say you take some measurements of, I got some notes here, um, 75 and 95 degrees, okay? And you just you're going to get this chart and you're going to start drawing in some some lines and plotting these things, okay? So I've got this uh, ginormous level here, which looks kind of silly, but actually works really good for for drawing on psychometric chart whiteboards. So I'm drawing in 95 and 75. OK, so those are two dry bulb lines. If you look at your chart, you'll have all these vertical lines. They're actually not 100% vertical. I learned that by Chris Adams. Thank you very much. But every time you see a vertical line like this, that's, that represents dry bulb. So I'll go ahead and write in some values here. And if you can't see this, don't worry about it. We're going to do it on the computer as well. But for some reason, I think the whiteboard kind of gives us a better or a different, a different feel to it. So, OK, so those are your dry bulb lines. The dry bulbs run on the X axis here. And on our chart, and I will mention, too, a lot of charts are different in the way they have the values on there and the way they're laid out. But if, if they're accurate, they all should have the same end results. OK, so our chart goes from minus 10 here to 130 degrees here, okay? That's the scale we have on our, on our charts. Um, okay, so you went out and did some measurements. Now we're gonna, you know, you went out there on the 75 degree day and the wet bulb, you know, you took two wet bulb measurements. And again, I'm gonna look at my notes here, um, 50 and 70. So those are the wet bulb measurements we're gonna, so we're gonna, you know, draw these in here. Something like this. You know what? I have a different color for each property, and I forgot to change it. So I'm going to go ahead and change it now. Something like that. OK. And something like that. So 50, 70, 50, 70. So those are your wet bulb lines. So whenever you see a slant like this, that's your, that's your wet bulb line, OK? I've got a cheat sheet here because I want to make sure it lines up relatively close. OK, so dry bulb here. Wet bulb are these slanted lines here. So you can see on your chart, you should have lines that, you know, every couple degrees go up this way. So the, the wet bulb increases as you go up in this direction. The dry bulb increases as you go in this direction. So dry bulb will put down here. Wet bulb will kind of put it over here, but really it's all, all in the chart. So, okay. So next we have dew point. 
So the dew point lines, we're gonna draw in this lovely purplish color, and we're gonna do a 50 degree dew point and a 70 degree dew point. So, oh, almost lost, lost the chart live on LinkedIn. That would have been something. Okay, so the dew point lines run horizontal across the chart like this. That'd be 50. And I have to say too, this is probably the first time ever a psychometric chart's been drawn on a whiteboard line uh, live on LinkedIn. So we are breaking all new grounds here. So, okay, so horizontal lines, dew point, okay? They increase as you go up the chart. So this would be 50 degree dew point. Move you up here. And this would be 70 degree dew point. Okay, so I hope this is starting to take shape here. So dry bulb, wet bulb, and then dew point. Okay, all right, next we're gonna draw relative humidity, and we're gonna use a red marker to indicate that. And I'm just gonna draw one line that is pretty close to 40 or 50%, because again, we're not trying to get accurate here. We're just trying to show the layout of the chart. So. Um, 40 would probably start up here and be something like, I don't know, something like this. So I'm just going to draw it like this. And then it comes out over here like this. So they, they kind of go like that. And I'm not going to try to draw a smooth line here because it's almost impossible for me with my ability. So. The RH lines mimic the saturation line. So 100% saturation, and as you go towards the right in this direction, you're decreasing in your relative humidity. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So this would be 40%, 30%, 50%, etc. Okay, so relative humidity, we'll just put this up here. Okay, next we have humidity. So we're gonna draw, so remember that's on this chart, it's in grains per pound of dry air. So the grains are located on the x-axis. They're, they're in the same kind of vicinity as the dew points, but there's a different scale to grains, okay? So we're gonna just draw in a 60 and a 120 grains of humidity, which is gonna require this orange marker and I know that it's gonna be approximately like right here. Okay, so this would be, again, the humidity lines or the grains, they run horizontal, same as the, the dew point line. So something along those lines. So I think we said that was 60 and 120, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, so 60 grains and 120 grain. So if you remember earlier from our example, the 120 grain example, you know, we looked at that being a very hot, humid and grainy day, right? Okay, so that's humidity. So enthalpy, we're gonna draw in some enthalpy lines. Enthalpy lines are s somewhat similar to the, um, to the wet bulb lines. And if we look, I think 20 is about right here-ish. And 70 and 40 is like somewhere up here. Again, we're not trying to get 100% accurate. We're just trying to get a, a flavor for the chart. So um, we would say this is 20 and this is 40. Okay. And we'll go ahead and draw these in. And you're going to see better on the computer how this kind of, how these enthalpy lines shake out. It's a little bit hard to see on this thing because it's getting kind of cluttered, but okay. So as you can see, as you would just fill this chart in, you're going to end up getting what we have today, which is a psychometric chart. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. We haven't done that in the whiteboard before, but I like the building it piece by piece for me and my brain. I'm a visual guy, so that helpful and I hope that's helpful to you all. Okay, so if we want to go back to the presentation, thank you, Heather. Uh, okay, and again, throw some questions in there. 
And I will, yep, Hugh, you're right. There is a difference between the slant, the slope of the line on the wet bulb and enthalpy. Thanks for pointing that out. Dry bulb temperature, vertical lines. Yep, dry bulb temperature, vertical lines. Thank you. Okay, so um, a few questions here. I'm just looking through. Okay, so I'll get to some of those here in just a moment. So. What we just did on the whiteboard, I'm going to give you kind of a, you know, a digital representation of that, which may help some folks, especially if you're following along with your, with your psych chart. So, um, if we go back to the chart and look at it again, the dry bulb lines run run along the x axis here, and on this chart from minus 10 to 130, so you can see they run from left to right in an increasing manner. Okay. Wet bulb, we talked about the wet bulb lines, and there's just a few measurements we're gonna put on there. So if you were, you know, back in the day and you went out in the field and started taking these measurements, you'd have your dry bulb and wet bulb, then you could start just drawing some lines to them and you kind of know what direction and how that relates to dry bulb, okay? So those are your wet bulb lines. And as we pointed out before, they increase as you go, you know, as you go up the chart, which you would expect them to. Okay, dew points. Again, the dew point increases as you as you as you go up the chart. My face got real big there for a second. Okay, so okay, so dew point runs horizontal in this manner, and you can see the lower lower value there from ten goes up to eighty as you go up the chart. Relative humidity, again, these are curves. And I think this is a little easier to see than probably on the whiteboard, but you can see from right to left is increasing humidity. And as you get to the, you know, the furthest left line is your 100% saturation. And after that, fog occurs, okay? Okay, grains, we talked about these before. This is the actual amount of moisture in the air. If you were to wring out a, you know, a quantity of air, you would you would have um, what was left in the what was in the air. The physical amount of moisture in the air is represented by grains, and they run horizontally just like the dew point temperature. Okay, enthalpy. Now, if you look at your chart, and I think we show this here in a minute, the enthalpy area is actually off off the chart you know, where you actually can find the numbers. But we're gonna look at that as an example here. And again, this is the total energy of the air. And you can see that increases as you increase, you know, in temperature and humidity as you would expect it to. Okay, so now we've got all these individual components. We've got all these properties of air. Now we're gonna overlay them on top of each other, right? So let's go ahead and put in the dry bulb lines, the wet bulb lines. Let's overlay the dew point lines, the relative humidity curves, the grains of moisture, and the enthalpy. Okay, so that's how you get the psychometric chart, right? That's a very basic way um, to show how this is built. So if you go back to the chart, you can now see if you just did what we did, but for every state condition you would measure, you would get what is here. So very simple. And again, if you're listening to this on our podcast in the future, um, you could always watch the physical version. This might be one that it's easier to understand if you're watching it on, a, on, a, on your computer rather than listening to it on a, on a podcast. So go to our YouTube channel, HVAC-TV on YouTube, and you could watch it anytime there. Okay. I will point out too that the chart we're using is at sea level. And if you're not at sea level, you need to use a different chart, okay? Different, different things happen when the density of air is much less. You know, if you're 500,000 feet and it's not a critical application, it's probably not that big of a deal. If you're in Denver, Colorado, and you're working on a pharmaceutical facility that needs minus 40 degree dew point, it's a major deal. So make sure you don't um, make those mistakes. Okay, so now we've talked about the chart in theory. Like, you know, we looked at it on the whiteboard and we just looked at it on these uh, very 
basic graphics. Now let's go to the actual chart and do some and do some plotting. Okay, so let's say we want to find the dry bulb, 95 degree dry bulb. So if you got a chart, you know, go to the bottom and see if you could find 95 degree dry bulb and draw the line, and it would look something like that. Okay. You can notice too that the line is not exactly vertical. There's a little slant to it. And that's because of the nature of the properties of air. I thought my chart was wrong until Chris Adams pointed that out to me, but that's a little known deal. They're not exactly 100% vertical. Okay, so what about 70 degrees dry bulb? If you wanna to try to find that on the chart, you would go to the left of 95, it's a little cooler, and you could draw on your line there. Okay, so if you were, you know, Using the psychometric chart to analyze something, you would want to start with this. So you know it's 95, you draw the line, 70, et cetera. So um, now let's do an example of some wet bulb conditions. So if you can find 70 degree wet bulb, remember the wet bulbs run on the curves here. So let you find that. Oh, I think I think I just drew them in there real quickly. So I was trying to find my pointer here. So pen tool. There it is. Okay. So this is 55 wet. And this is 70 degree wet bulb. And you could see how we just followed the line. You know, there's a blue line underneath it now, but you can see like we would just follow this line now and draw that in. Okay. So do that with okay. So dew point, if we had a six degree dew point, we would go over here to the dew point scale, which is right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and circle 60 degree dew point and see this line here. We would just draw that line in here, which is shown right there. Okay. So that's just a little practical example on how to use the chart and draw in, you know, find the temperatures and et cetera, and draw them in. Okay. So relative humidity, Let's go ahead and find 50% RH. On this particular chart, you can see the relative humidities are, you know, in a couple different spots, but here's, you know, where, where most of them are. So if we want to find 50% RH, we would just go to 50%. And then, oops, draw that in. And if we wanted to find 20%, we would go here and then draw that in, okay? That's how you would get relative humidity. Okay, so this slide, we're gonna look at the enthalpy as an example. And remember earlier, I was talking about the enthalpy being kind of off the chart here. You know, so these values are located on this line here. I'm not gonna draw the whole thing, but it goes all the way down to here, et cetera. So you get what I'm saying. So 20 enthalpy. So the way you draw the enthalpy lines is you, Find your 20 BTUs per pound here, and you also find it over here. If you look at the scale over here, you'd find 20 here. You take your straight edge and you connect the two, and you would get your line that represents 20 BTUs enthalpy, okay? And as was pointed out earlier, they're not exactly the same slant as the as the wet bulb lines. Okay, so 40 degree or 40 BTUs is right here and here. And we would just go ahead and connect those with our straight edge and that would represent the 40 BTUs. Yeah, so somebody asked why are the dry bulb lines not perfectly vertical? That's a great question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the answer to it. It's something to do with the density of air, I'm sure, as you increase the temperature. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. If anyone knows, throw it in the chat. I love to know too. Um, okay. So. Okay. So where are we at here? So we. Let's see here at the chart. Okay. So we talked about the properties of air. We showed how the chart is put together. 
Now we're going to just two quick little segments here. We're going to talk about moving around the chart, otherwise known as psychometric processes. And then we're going to talk about determining air properties, which is something that's very commonly uh, done on a psychometric chart. So. Okay, so what we're talking about when we talk about psychometric processes are, you know, cooling, heating, humidification, dehumidification, and then the variance, you know, the combinations of of those processes okay so so when we look at the chart and don't worry about not being able to see all the numbers what we're trying to get is a general feel of the flow when i go this way it's cooling when i go this way it's heating etc so that's what we're trying to do here um so first we'll look at cooling and heating so you know to do this we're going to focus on the dry bulb temperature on the bottom and there's our dry bulb lines And I'm just going to fill in a couple arbitrary temperatures here. So what do you notice about the dry bulb, right? As you move from left to right, they increase. So, so let's look at a couple different processes and figure out what they would be. So what would this represent? Would this be, if air is going from the right to the left, would this be cooling or heating? Well, you're going from a higher dry bulb to a lower, so that would be a cooling process, right? If you're going from right, I'm sorry, from left to right, that would represent a heating process, right? Because you're starting out, you know, if you look at that arrow, you're probably on 70 degrees, ending up at 130, something like that. So that is a, a heating process. Okay, so that's cooling and heating. So let's look at humidification, adding humidity, and dehumidification, removing humidity. We're going to look at two point to illustrate that, because looking at RH is not, relative humidity is not a good way to understand this. So, um, okay, so dew point temperatures, again, run horizontally in this, in this fashion. And I've just typed in a few arbitrary dew point numbers to give you a feel for which direction adds humidity to the air. So as you increase the dew point, you increase the humidity in the air, okay? So it goes from 40, you know, in this, on what you see on the screen, it goes from 40 up to 85. So if we were to draw a process in here going in this direction, would we be humidifying or dehumidifying? Well, we'd be increasing the dew point, so we would be adding humidity to the air. We'd be humidifying the air. So in this case, it's going from about 50 dew point to 80, something along those lines. You could do the same thing for grains. You could use grains as part of this example as well, but right now we're just using dew point. So humidification, so dehumidification, removing moisture from the air would go the opposite way, right? So we, you know, going from a dew point of mm, 72-ish down to, I don't know, 15, 20 degree dew point. So we're removing moisture from the air. That is the process of dehumidification. Okay, all together, so cooling, heating, humidification, dehumidification. Okay, so that's the general flow of when you're moving this way up and down, left to right on the chart. Now, most of the times we aren't going on a straight path in air conditioning. Sometimes when we're doing sensible heating only we are, but a lot of times we're talking about removing temperature and humidity from the air, right? So what does cooling and dehumidification look like? Well, we know what the cooling process looks like because we just looked at that. We now know what the dehumidification process looks like because we looked at that. So the combination of the two would be cooling and dehumidifying, which would look something like this. So when you're moving in the general direction of, you know, up here to down here, you're cooling and dehumidifying, right? And what are, where do we see that mostly in, in HVAC? We see that in cooling coils, right? Because cooling coils are removing temperature, the cooling process, and they're removing humidity, dehumidification process. So, you know, cooling coil lines, you know, generally look something like this, comes over towards saturation and goes down. We get in a lot of that in part two. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that here. This is just meant to be just a general introduction to the psychometric stuff. 
Okay, heating and humidification. Something we don't do a ton of in the southeast, unless we work on computer rooms, data centers, things of that nature, but it is done. So heating, as we know, moves from left to right. Humidification moves from, you know, bottom to top. It goes up is what I'm trying to say. And a combination of the two is heating and humidification. So if you have like a lab and you have a lot of makeup air in a unit and it's 10 degrees outside your design condition, you would heat that air and you'd probably humidify the space. You know, that would be a perfect, that would be a, a common example of heating and humidifying, okay? Okay, so final section here, we're gonna look at, and this would really come in handy if you have your chart. So we're gonna look at, and again, if you're listening to this in the future on the podcast, look in the description, In the there should be a link there to the video version of this, of this uh, tutorial, and you can go watch it and print out your psychometric chart anytime and just go to our YouTube channel and sit down and, and go through it. And we have part two and three on there as well. So, okay, so properties of air, building the chart, moving around the chart, We've talked about all of those things. And now we're just gonna look at quickly determining air properties. And this is a very common tool for using the chart. You know, a lot of this is done now on your, on your app, on your phone, and I, I do that too, but this is a good way to learn the psychometric chart. If you're out in the field and you take a couple of measurements, you know, come back, pull out your chart and see what the dew point is, see what the RH is. It'll help you kind of understand what's, what's going on. So what, what's happening here is if you know two states, properties of air, you could determine them all by plotting them on the psychometric chart, okay? Example number one, let's say we have a dry bulb temperature of 75 degrees and a relative humidity of 50%, okay? Let's use the psychometric chart to determine these other properties of air, which we talked about earlier, wet bulb, humidity, enthalpy, and dew point. So, if you have a chart handy, go ahead and find 75 degree dry bulb. Give you a second to find that. And you can draw that in, which is right there. And where is 50% RH? I still have my pen tool, so I'm gonna circle it here. So 50% RH is right here and 75 dry is right here. Thank you, Mitch. Appreciate the comment. And thank you all. Thank you. By the way, thank you all for watching and for supporting our online efforts. We truly, truly enjoy it. It is really, you know, at Insight and Hobbs, we really do appreciate the opportunity to give back to the HVAC community. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, okay, so, and then Franklin asks, is there any way to look at the whole presentation from getting in? Yes. And I, uh, Heather, if you want to put up the QR code again for the YouTube channel, you can go to our YouTube channel at HVAC-TV um, and you can watch these anytime. We've got several of them there. We've got parts two and three there. We really do enjoy doing these. So, um, Okay, so back to this example and thank you all for the questions. And if you have any questions, please put them in there. I'll address them here in a minute because we're getting close to the, the end. So 75, 50%, okay. So draw in the 50%, our H line, and we'll go ahead and Put that intersect there. Now, from this intersection point, you can determine the wet bulb humidity dew point and enthalpy. So what you do is you take, I'm going to circle this again here. So if you take this point and you find the wet bulb line that closely matches this point and just draw it up to the wet bulb up here, that's how you find your wet bulb, okay? So see how we just shot it up there? I believe that's 62-ish, uh, which is right there. Boom, so 62 degree wet bulb, it's just that easy. Okay, so we know our humidity is over here, right? I'm gonna circle that. So we find the horizontal line, you know, if we just draw a horizontal line from the intersection of the 75 and 50%, like so, and we shoot it over here, we could see the grains. So it's between the 60 and the 70. So I would say it's about 65 grains. Let's see what number I plugged in here. I'll put the scale, yep, 65 grains. And the dew point you can see is in the same spot. So here's the dew point. Here's the dew point here. So 
you know, 55 degree dew point and enthalpy. Again, you would want to take a straight edge and go from this scale down to this scale here, you know, and wherever that straight edge intersected this point and matched both BTU values is where you would end up on the BTUs. Okay. In this case, it is 28 BTUs per pound. Okay. So there's two more examples here. I'm going to go through these last two a little faster because I want to make sure I don't take up too much of your time and keep you from your Friday lunch, which uh, I hope you're all getting to enjoy a good relaxing day. Okay. So example two. So on this hydrometer here on the, on the photo, which is the one I have in my hand, this was taken at my home, 78 degrees, 27%. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, so we're going to take those two conditions. We'll plot them here. So 78 degree dry bulb is right here. 27% RH is right there. And then we can do the same thing we did on the last example and find the wet bulb, which we would just draw a line towards the wet bulb line there. And we would determine that wet bulb is 57.5. And then for dew point, we just shoot it over to the right. I think that's about 41-ish, yep, 41 degree dew point. And then or enthalpy or enthalpy, we say it up here in the mountain sometimes, you would just draw that line there and that's about 24-ish, I believe, 24.7, um, there you go. Okay, so if you're new, you know, hopefully you're starting to get a, a, a feel for how this works, right? And again, a lot of this is done on the apps and the computer, but you know, to really learn it, I, I, for me personally, I really am glad I learned it on paper, um, second measure charts, because it really does, you know, is 120 grains a lot. I don't know, let me plot it and see, you know, so it helps me understand, you know, where things are. This last example is 95, 78, 95 dry, 78 wet, which is an extremely humid and grainy day. And uh, glad it's not like that today where I am at, but uh, anyway, so that's 95 degrees dry bulb, 78 degree wet bulb. And so what we do is just like we did before, we just draw the intersection of those two points and then we, we, can, we can define them all on the, on the chart here. So dew point, if you just shoot over to the right, it looks like 72 grains is right there. It's a hard to see the 120 because it's covered up by the green line, but it's 120. It's kind of the same grains we've been using. You know, we looked at that earlier, eight grams of water, um, which is about four dimes, I think. So anyway, useless. I'm full of useless information. So that's, that's something you can, you can impress people with. Okay. So relative humidity, I would say that's 47, 48 ish. So, okay. So 47% RH. Okie dokie. So we looked at the properties of air. We simulated building a psychometric chart. We looked at processes of psychometrics, heating, cooling, humidification, dehumidification, and, and combinations thereof. And we looked at determining air properties. Okay, so I'm gonna answer some questions here. Before you go, um, we get this question all the time. Uh, am I done? Is this all I need to know? Um, no. <laughs> this is just the beginning. If you're starting out in, in HVAC, this is just the beginning of, uh, you know, you can spend a lot of time learning about psychometrics. But, you know, we, we have three versions. We have part one, two, and three on our website, um, on our YouTube channel, excuse me, in part two, we get into, you know, air mixing, sensible heat ratio, constant volume systems, um, full load and part load psychometrics and uh hey tim thank you and and that so um heather if you want to put up my email address don't forget if you need if you need the pdh certificate for this please um email me and i'll get that to you and here's you know some links to the podcast and the thing but i'm going to sit around here and answer some questions you're welcome to stay you've met your one hour requirement for pdhs so you're you know if you have to cruise no problemo. Um, if you don't mind, before you leave, if you would like this video, we greatly, greatly appreciate it. And uh, thank you to Heather for all the hard work. And I'm going to sit here and answer some questions. Please hang out if you want to. And I'll see if I got some here that I could, I could answer. So Heather, if you don't mind, I'm going to shift this over to um, 
this mode here as I go through some questions here. So, um, Elias Lee, I hope I'm saying that, that name right. Um, the process of studying for my PE exam, this is definitely helping me to relearn the basics of psychometrics, which I was shredding. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, the examples are look great. Oh, thank you. Well, he was just telling me a compliment. He wasn't asking a question. I didn't mean to read that, but thank you. I appreciate the compliment um, for sure. He was asking when, the, asking when the next class will be. I don't know. We kind of just do these things live when we um, can squeeze them in. But uh, but again, on the YouTube channel, I mean, I feel like I'm really pushing the YouTube channel. But it is, you know, we, we do appreciate the opportunity to give back. Um, tell them the email or the yeah, make sure you email me. Don't put your email in the chat because we won't be able to respond that way. But uh, yeah, so just email me. Heather's uh, got the email up there and I'll be glad to get that to you. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I don't see a whole lot more questions, but again, I really appreciate you all spending the time and watching these. It is tons of fun for me. And I'm gonna just you know play this timer here and let this play for a minute if you guys wanna zap these QR codes and check out our resources. Um, that'd be fantastic. And uh, get this timer right here. Okay. Again, thank you all so much for joining and we appreciate it. Please like this video if you, um, if you got something out of it and we appreciate all your time and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.